Just a little over two years ago, the Arizona Cardinals were coached by Steve Wilkes, quarterbacked by Josh Rosen, and coming off a 3-13 season. Oftentimes in sports, the term continuity is taken very seriously, meaning players and coaches more times than not are given a chance to prove themselves for more than just one year. The Cardinals had a decision to make. Do they stick with Steve Wilkes, who looked very overwhelmed in his first year as a head coach and not ready, or make this a one-and-done and wipe the slate clean completely? The answer didn't take long for Wilkes as he was fired the day after the Cardinals' final game of the season on December 31st of 2018. The Cardinals had a similar decision to make a quarterback, but this one took a little bit longer. In 2018's NFL Draft, the Cardinals were picking 15th overall, but they knew they had to make some type of move for a younger quarterback after the retirement of Carson Palmer. They did sign former number one overall pick Sam Bradford to a two-year deal, but being 31 years old and having a lengthy injury history, they knew that wasn't the long-term answer. On the night of 2018's draft, Arizona traded up from 15 to 10, including a third-round pick to select quarterback Josh Rosen out of UC. CLA. Coming out of college, Rosen looked to be one of the more NFL-ready quarterbacks and was a pure pocket passer that could throw a pretty ball. The problem was that Rosen had limited mobility and the Cardinals found that out the hard way a year later. It seemed like everything that could have went wrong did go wrong for Arizona, especially offensively. Calling the 2018 Cardinals offense bad would not do it justice. They were so inept that they finished a whole 48.3 yards behind the 31st ranked team in offensive yards per game. That also included a league worst 14.1 points per game, which was 1.2 behind the the 31st ranked Jaguars, they were that horrendous. They fired offensive coordinator Mike McCoy and replaced him with Byron Leftwich, who just won a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay, actually. The offensive line was ravaged by injuries as six offensive linemen made it to the IR that season. A little over a week into firing Steve Wilkes, the Cardinals brought in former Texas Tech head coach Cliff Kingsbury on a four-year deal. The hiring of Kingsbury was exciting for a guy that once coached the likes of Patrick Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, and Case Keenum, and was bringing his spread and air raid offense to the NFL. The problem was that Josh Rosen wasn't necessarily a fit for that system and the Cardinals held the number one overall pick. I mentioned before how continuity is important to a lot of other teams, but the Cardinals did the unthinkable and took another quarterback in the first round. This time it was Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray, who was also a top 10 pick in the MLB draft, but committed to the NFL a couple months prior. The pick was made by Kingsbury, of course, but another man by the name of Steve Kime as well. Kime has been with the Cardinals organization as a general manager since 2013 and they had success under him right away including back-to-back -back playoff appearances and an NFC Championship appearance. But once Palmer retired, some of the other guys left in free agency or got older, and it became evident that Kaim wasn't doing a good job of rebuilding this Cardinals roster. Despite Steve Wilkes and Josh Rosen getting the axe after one season, they kept Steve Kaim, which was puzzling to say the least. Back to the Kyler pick, there was an interview in 2018 of Cliff Kingsbury speaking on Kyler Murray and even admitted back then that he would take Kyler Murray first overall if he ever had the chance. I mean, I don't have enough good things to say about him. He's phenomenal. I've never seen him have a, a poor outing, not one, which at quarterbacks it's impossible to do, but he's done it. And uh, I don't know, I'd take him with the first pick of the draft if I could. I know he's signed up to play baseball, but I, he is a dominant football player. And it's funny how the universe works sometimes, isn't it? As we know, the Cardinals traded the former 10th overall pick Josh Rosen from a year prior to Miami for a second round pick, and this was officially Kyler Murray's team. Year one of Cliff Kingsbury didn't go great record-wise, going 5-10-1, but the offense got much better, jumping from 32nd in scoring to 17th just a year later. They still lacked major talent on the roster in 2019, but as the time went on, they continued to get better. The highlight was next offseason of them pulling off one of the most lopsided trades in recent memory when essentially acquiring a top three receiver in DeAndre Hopkins for a 28-year-old running back on a big contract and a couple of draft picks that weren't even first-rounders. It seemed like in 2020, the Cardinals were ready to take that next step, and although they somewhat did, it ended in disappointment. They started 5-2 and two and even 6-3 and three after the Hale Murray against Buffalo, but they ended the season going 2-5 and five in their final seven games. Kyler Murray did sustain an injury to his shoulder, which definitely affected his play in the second half of the season, and Kyler went from an MVP candidate in the first half to a guy limping to the finish line in the second half of the season. To his credit, he did play in all 16 games, but you can tell he was playing injured most of that second half of the year. The good news is that despite the 13-18 and 18 quarterback record, it's easy to tell that Kyler Murray is a franchise quarterback. I've been a big supporter of his. I even hyped him up last offseason making a video about him, and when healthy, he performs like a top 10 quarterback. Now here's where the Cardinals may have turned the corner. First, the Cardinals took DeAndre Hopkins from Houston in a 
few weeks ago it was announced that the Arizona Cardinals signed future Hall of Famer defensive end J.J. Watt to a two-year $31 million deal. Some people think J.J. Watt is washed and ineffective, but that's far from the truth in my opinion. Watt, if healthy, can give them at least one more good season playing like a top 15 defensive end. I truly believe that. In recent days, they made a big move for three-time Pro Bowl center Rodney Hudson giving up a third round pick in return. Hudson is 31 years old, but has been one of the best pass blocking centers in the NFL for almost a decade now. They bulked up their offensive line by keeping Kelvin Beecham at right tackle on a two-year deal as well. They already have DJ Humphreys at left tackle, who was awesome last season, and Justin Pugh, who's very solid at guard. On the same day they traded for Hudson, they also signed veteran wide receiver AJ Green to a one-year deal. That adds him to a wide receiver group that already has DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, Andy Isabella, and possibly Larry Fitzgerald if he does not retire. I know that AJ Green clearly lost a step from what it looked like last year, but you have to wonder how much effort he was putting in. Playing on a terrible team and having one year of stability while playing on the franchise tag had to be on the back of his mind that entire season. Green is still 32 and Cardinals fans are no strangers to this because they saw Larry Fitzgerald have himself a resurgence at age 32 in 2015. Fitzgerald came off three straight seasons under 1,000 yards but broke out for over 1,200 yards in 2015 at 32 years old. They also shored up some of their defense by re-signing guys like Marcus Golden and Robert Alford. So we'll see what the Cardinals do the rest of free agency and the draft, but I'm a big fan of this team in 2021, assuming that Kyler Murray makes it through healthy. You can't forget about the return of Chandler Jones from injury and even second year linebacker Isaiah Simmons who hopefully takes on a bigger role for their sake. They could use some help at cornerback, nose tackle, wide receiver, and even tight end, so it's not like this team is stacked beyond belief, but it seems like the Cardinals are becoming the new ring chasing destination for one season at least. Guys like AJ Green and JJ Watt who have been around for a long time and haven't even been to a championship game, I doubt they would go to a team that they did not think were legit Super Bowl contenders in their early 30s. I just don't think they would pick Arizona over other teams just for the money. We'll see what they do in 2021. It's a big year for Cliff Kingsbury, who some people speculate will be on the hot seat if things do not go well in 2021, so we'll see how that goes next year. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe for more NFL content, and I'll talk to you guys next time.